My foot on the gas, like I'm tryna bust out the bottom. Watch how I slide and then get off like a potter. Catch me if you can, I'm a bad man. Live a double life like I'm bad man. My foot on the gas. Do you wanna know how to breed ball pythons? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's your boy Mike from Balls of Fury. Today we're gonna be showing you guys how we actually breed our ball pythons here at Balls of Fury. We'll talk about the steps that we go through and help you guys kind of understand the whole entire process of actually breeding ball pythons. It's a really fun process and it's also super exciting and very rewarding. So let's talk about the first thing you guys will need to know if you're thinking about breeding ball pythons. Before we get started, I just wanna say that I am no expert on breeding ball pythons whatsoever. I'm still learning and I'm still a gaining experience. This was my first official season breeding ball pythons and actually getting a successful clutch that I hatched out. So I'm still learning guys. There's a thousand different ways to breed ball pythons. Everyone has different methods, but I just wanted to share my experiences with you guys and what I have learned so far so that you can take that and add it to your methods or if you're just getting started, you can maybe learn some tips from me and apply that to when you actually have the chance to breed your snakes. But let's get into what you guys should know first. One of the first thing you guys are gonna need to know is what the actual proper age and breeding size is for a ball python before you even get started. Typically for males here at Balls of Fury, we like them to be at least 500 grams or more before we actually introduce them to a female. This guy right here is a beautiful lavender albino. He's also het for VPI Azanthic. He's about 800 grams. He is one of our breeder males here at Balls of Fury. And as you guys can see, he's got great body weight, perfect condition to breed, super healthy snake, and that's what you want in your males when you get ready to pair them up with females. And it's important that your male has good body weight on him before you actually start breeding him because it's very common for males to actually stop feeding during the breeding season. These guys will go into breeding mode. They will have no interest in food. All they are thinking about is breeding. And if your snake is underweight or not at a good body weight prior to the breeding season starting, it could be lethal to them and they can actually breed themselves to death. So you definitely wanna make sure that your males are well fed going into the breeding season. And you wanna to try to keep those guys on food as long as you possibly can so they can make it through the entire season without you having to shelf them or without them having any health issues down the road. So it's very important to have a healthy, good sized male. And when it comes to the female guys, the bigger, the better. Typically the rule of thumb here at Balls of Fury is that we like our females to be about 1200 to 1500 grams before we actually introduce them to a male. Now, there are exceptions to this rules, guys. I've heard of males breeding as, as small as 400 grams, and I've also heard of females successfully breeding as small as 900 grams. So there are exceptions to the rules. It kind of just depends on the snake. But here at Balls of Fury, we like to wait a little bit longer, let them grow a little bit more, and have a nice beefy female. This girl is about a 2,000 gram snake right here, so she is perfectly equipped to make it through the breeding season and hopefully have a successful clutch of eggs. So the bigger the female is, the better in my opinion. And from my personal experience, guys, the bigger the females are, the more success you're gonna have with your actual egg production. So it's better to wait and get good size on those females. Now, I know a lot of breeders will say that they like to start at 1500 grams, but my thought process and my experience, honestly, is that if you have a female who's at about 1100, 1200 grams, you're gonna continue offering that girl food throughout the breeding season and she's gonna to continue to grow and get bigger. And we'll talk about some of the triggers to actually help your snake develop follicles and actually trigger them to lock up with males. So let's get into that topic next. So when you're getting ready to pair up your snakes, guys, follicles are one of the most important things to know about. Follicles are what actually are inside your female snake and they are what grow into the egg eventually. Now. Here at Balls of Fury, we ultrasound our females to see what their follicle sizes are at. You can use the ultrasound machine to actually see the follicles inside the snake and you can actually measure them and get a reading on how big the actual follicle is. 
if you can't afford to get an ultrasound machine, you can also palpate the snake and actually feel for the follicles. And um, I'm not the best at palpating, guys. I have tried it and I really, really have struggled with it. So I went out and bought an ultrasound machine and it has made all the difference in the world for me. So if you guys are serious about breeding ball pythons, I would definitely suggest getting an ultrasound machine. It's very accurate and it's definitely gonna help you breed your snakes successfully and it also takes a lot of stress off your males when you know the follicle size that your females are at. Now with ultrasounding guys, here at Balls of Fury we ultrasound once a month. Usually if uh, we have females that are locking up with males, I will ultrasound them once a month. I will ultrasound them before we even introduce males obviously to see where their follicle size is at. And basically the point of ultrasounding them once a month is to see if those follicles have grown at all. And also it helps you kind of decide when you're gonna put that male back in. You wanna get those locks in as those follicles are growing. So it's really important to know what those follicle sizes are at. And also it could take some stress off of your male if you know the size of the follicle and you can kind of pinpoint when you wanna put that male in with the female. So. You could do this with palpating as well. You could palpate once every couple of weeks to see if those follicles are actually growing. And uh, it's basically the same thing as ultrasounding, but you're just using your hands to feel for it instead of actually visually seeing the follicle inside the snake with the ultrasound machine. So typically guys, I like to start introducing males to females when the female's follicle size is about 15 to 20 millimeters. I feel that this is a really good time to introduce those males and start getting locks on those females. And we'll talk about some of the different triggers that actually will promote follicle growth and will actually promote your snakes to lock up or copulate or have snake sex. Let's talk about some of those triggers, guys. There really isn't a set breeding season for ball pythons in captivity. However, here at Balls of Fury, I live in an area where it gets cold, you know, nine months out of the year. So typically, we like to pair them up during the winter time because in the wild, ball pythons will typically uh, breed during the cooler time of the year and also during the raining season when there's a lot of stormy weather. And these things are triggers for your ball pythons. Now, typically, before we actually introduce males to females, we will start dropping the temperature down at nighttime. Usually I keep the snake room at about 82 degrees during the daytime and at nighttime I let it drop down to about 78 normally. However, during the times where I'm going to breed the snakes, I will keep that ambient temperature at 82 during the day and at nighttime I'll let it drop down to sometimes almost 70 degrees and I noticed that with dropping the temperature down nice and cool at nighttime, it really, really promotes follicular growth and it also promotes the snakes locking up. So this is something that I've seen and I've experienced and I really truly believe that the temperature difference can make a big difference. However, guys, you don't have to do this. I know some breeders that don't change the temperatures at all and still have successful breeding seasons. So this is just my personal experience and a tip that I'll give to you guys if you're having trouble getting your snakes to actually lock up. Drop those temperatures at nighttime and also guys, weather and barometric pressure play a big role in getting locks. If you know there's a big you know, storm or blizzard coming your way, that's a great time to pair your snakes up because those drops in barometric pressure will trigger your snakes to want to breed. Another very, very important thing that has to do with breeding guys is feeding cycles. Now, I know we touched on it a little bit with the males being at a good breeding size before you actually pair them up. So what I like to do is during the summer months, I'll really feed my males well, get some really good weight on them in the summer. And then during the breeding season, I'll kind of just maintain feed them. As long as they keep eating, I will continue to offer them food. Even if they go off of food, I will still try to offer them food. Sometimes I'll offer them different prey items to see if I can get them to eat. However, during the summertime, I will really feed the males well to get that nice size on them so that they can make it through the breeding season nice and healthy. Now for the females, guys, it's actually the opposite way around here at Balls of Fury. During the summertime, I usually will maintain feed the females. And as soon as we start introducing males, we will start increasing the amount of food that we're giving to those females. 
Typically, a breeder female here at Balls of Fury, when she's breeding, will get two or three rats at a shot. If she will take it, she will get it, guys. I will pretty much just give the females a buffet of food. And what I've noticed this does is it all it promotes follicular growth. But also, like I was telling you guys, if your female is at like 1,200 grams and you're upping the food during that breeding season, she's going to put on a lot of size and she's going to get those fatty reserves going. And an increase in food means that psychologically, she's going to say there's a plethora of food in this area for my babies to eat and she'll go ahead and produce eggs for you. So increasing that food intake in your females during the breeding season, I feel it's crucial to your snake's success with actually producing eggs for you guys. So food cycle is really important, guys. And this is another trigger that you can use to promote follicular growth. So I like to maintain the females during the summer and then really power feed them during the breeding season. However, when it's a young female like this girl, obviously I'm not gonna power feed her. She's not breeding, so she'll continue to get the proper diet that she gets throughout the year until she's ready to breed. When she's ready to breed, during that breeding season, she will be getting a buffet of rodents. So I think food cycling is really, really important, guys, and it's really, really key to having success with your egg production down the road. Now here comes the fun part, you guys, actually pairing up your snakes. Basically, all you do is you take the male you wanna put in there and you put them in the female's enclosure. We always move the male to the female's enclosure and you pretty much just put him in there and let them do your thing. I typically like to pair them up right around you know, dusk and let them do their thing at nighttime and then I come in the next day and kind of check on them to see if they're locked up. Anytime you guys see a visual lock, you definitely wanna mark that down. You wanna mark the date down that you saw the lock. And once the snakes unlock, I usually will separate them, give them a break, feed them, and then I will pair them up again, either the next week or the following week. This is what a lock will actually look like, you guys. The male will wrap his tail underneath the female's tail and they could stay locked up like this for 24 hours, up to possibly three days. So. If you see this, you wanna leave them alone until the male and female unlock, and then you can kind of separate them. And usually if you get a visual lock, guys, you usually have a couple weeks before you have to put that male back in there. And that's typically why we ultrasound once a month to kind of see where those follicles are at so we can decide when we're actually gonna put our male back in with the female. So early on in the breeding season, we will actually pair up our snakes weekly until we ultrasound for that second time to see if there was follicular growth. I believe by having that male in there, it does promote follicular growth, especially if the snakes are locking up. Now, when we do go back and ultrasound, guys, if we do see growth of the follicles, we'll put the male back in there, see if we get a lock. And then typically you have a few weeks before you need to put that male back in there again. So we'll ultrasound again, see where the follicles are at and determine whether we're going to put that male back in there or not. And typically, guys, ovulation will occur around 35 millimeters. That is when the eggs will basically be formed is around 35 millimeters. So it's really important to get those locks in around 20 millimeters. And then again, at 30 millimeters, that's when I feel it's really crucial to have your males locking up with your females. And once you have that ovulation, you know for a fact that you are getting eggs. So you can pretty much put that male back on the shelf unless you got him going to other females. If you don't, then he has pretty much done his job and he is done for the season. And that's pretty much the process of breeding these snakes. And right here we have our lavender het VPI azanthic female. And as you can see, we got a nice, nice big swell right here. This girl is also off of food and has been locking up with another lavender het VPI male. And look at that beautiful big swell right here. You can kind of see it a little bit better from the front. And also if you notice her spine is kind of very pronounced where this swell is going on. 
She's been off of food for about a month or two now as well. So hopefully we're getting some fertile eggs from this beautiful girl too. I'm really, really excited, hoping to hit on some lavender snows in this clutch. So we're gonna wait and see what happens and we're gonna hope for the best. Now, after the ovulation guys, about two weeks after that, she will go into what's called a pre-lay shed and she will shed her skin. 30 days to 45 days from that shed is when she will potentially lay that clutch of eggs. So once that snake sheds out, you guys can begin your countdown to the eggs. And it's such an exciting and impatient time for us snake breeders because we just want those eggs to come out and see how many that this girl is holding inside of her. So super excited for these two girls to actually be going this season. So once your snake stops eating, this is usually a sign that they are going to ovulate relatively soon. And this is pretty much what the ovulation will look like, you guys. You see this very, very large swell right here. This is the ovulation. It'll actually look like the snake has literally eaten like a football. This snake in particular hasn't eaten in about two months. So this is definitely an ovulation. I know for a fact this is not food. Once you see an ovulation, guys, this is basically confirmation that you are going to get eggs no matter what. The question is, will they be fertile or not? Hopefully, in this case, all of these eggs will be fertile. She locked up a ton of times with that clown male you guys saw in the previous clips in this video. So hopefully getting some leopard clowns from this girl, that will be super amazing. I'm super excited that she has actually ovulated. And I'll show you guys another example of an ovulation because we just had another one of our females actually ovulate. Now, some really good signs that you want to see from your female that will kind of tell you that she's developing follicles and that the follicles are growing are a few things. If you notice your female is spending a lot more time on the cooler side of her tub, this is a good sign that she is growing follicles. Also, if you look at this picture right over here, you can see this female bowl wrapping and she's actually cooling down her body temperature to adjust it for that follicle growth. Now, another great sign, guys, and something that I've noticed is that usually around 30 millimeters or so, once those follicles get to 30 millimeters, I notice that the females will start to go off of food. This is a really good sign. This is the time of year when you want your female to stop eating. That is typically a sign now that the follicles have reached a point where she can no longer fit food into her and also she no longer wants to put energy towards digestion or feeding. All of her energy is going towards egg development at this point. So right around 30 millimeters is where I have noticed the females will stop feeding. And this, these are really great signs that you wanna look for in your snake. Also, if you look at this video over here, you can also see your snake laying inverted like this. This is also a sign that those follicles are getting nice and big and your female is kind of uncomfortable. So these are all signs to look for if you're getting locks on your snake, if you're ultrasounding and those follicles are growing. And uh, these are all things that you wanna pay attention to as you're going through the breeding process. But once your snake ovulates, you'll start to notice that your snake is spending a lot of time coiled up on the hot side of her enclosure. This is telling you that she is nesting and gestating those eggs, getting ready to lay them about 30 days after she goes through that pre-lay shed. So this is a really exciting time, guys, and that countdown starts. So you'll start to notice her nesting on that warm side of the enclosure. And another really important thing, guys, that not a lot of people touch on when I see these videos is to make sure that you're recording your data if you're breeding your ball pythons. Record every single time your females are eating as well as your males. Record when they stop eating food. Record every time you get a lock, write the date down. Record all the data you possibly can because this is going to help you be successful in producing eggs. And it's also something that you can look back on when you go into your next season and you have a little bit more experience. And you can kind of use that as tools to guide you and help you succeed the following year even more. So definitely record all that data, guys. Record the sheds, record feeding, record uh, locks, record the follicle growth, write down the dates of when you actually ultrasound or palpate. And this is all gonna help you in the long run. So definitely record your data, that is super important. After all that hard work pays off you guys, this is what you get, 
a big beautiful clutch of ball python so that pretty much wraps up the video for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video i know it was a lot of information to kind of absorb and learn but i hope this helps any of you guys out there that are thinking about breeding your ball python so whether it's as a hobby or as a business these are my personal experiences from what i have seen so far in doing this so I hope it helped you guys out. And also, if you guys have any tips out there that might be helpful for me, please drop a comment and let me know. I love learning from you guys and I love hearing your experiences as well. So I really would love for you guys to drop some comments down there and let me know what you think and let me know if you guys have any tips as well. So I hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like, please subscribe to the channel, drop those comments guys, and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.